He was five foot eight. That's why he's drafted 134th overall in 1984. Cliff Ronning was a phenomenon in junior hockey. He was a phenomenon in Bantam. He was a phenomenon in Pee Wee and in juniors. In juniors, 197 point WHL season for the New Westminster Bruins, and that was uh, that's an, that's a number that was eclipsed after. But for the time, it was a record, and it was pretty impressive considering he was drafted 134th overall. But we understand most hockey fans understand that if a guy becomes a, a a star in the NHL, it doesn't necessarily mean he was a star in the WHL and vice versa, that if you're a star in junior leagues, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to translate those skills at the NHL level. He had a hard time with St. Louis, and I really think that his size held him back there. I think that St. Louis looked at him, said he's five foot eight. he's a center. We want big centers. 86-87, his rookie year, he played 42 games, had 11 goals, 14 assists, 25 points. 87-88, he split his time between, I believe it was Peoria, and the St. Louis Blues played 26 games, 8 goals, 5 assists, 13 games when he was called up. 88-89, 64 games played, 24 goals, 31 assists, 55 points. Didn't feel like he was getting a, a really good chance to play games as he wanted to. So he signs in Italy, and he put up a ton of points in Italy for the 89-90 season. And then agrees to come back and play in North America in 1990. 90-91, he plays 48 games for the Blues, 14 goals, 18 assists, 32 points. But again, the perception seemed to be there that because Cliff Ronning was short and he was smaller, that he wasn't going to be a top-notch player. So he gets packaged to the Canucks. See, the Blues figured they were a couple players short of a Stanley Cup. And they're like, we're going for it. So they trade a fifth-round draft pick with Cliff Ronning, Jeff Cortnell, who was a depth guy for St. Louis, Sergio Momesso, depth guy, and Robert Dirk, depth defenseman, for Dan Quinn, who was seen as a, a top-notch forward that was going to get them to that next level, and Garth Butcher, a defenseman who they felt that <clears throat> was going to give them that sandpaper on the blue line that they needed. Immediately upon arriving in Vancouver, his hometown team, Cliff Ronning got better. 11 games, 6 goals, 6 assists, 12 points, and Pat Quinn had full faith in him from day one. 91-92, he plays 80 games, 24 goals, 47 assists, 71 points. 92-93, 79 games, 29 goals, 56 assists, 85 points. And that's a career high. And Ronning was a really solid center. I always kind of felt, and I felt this with Brendan Morrison of Vancouver too, I always felt like he might have been better off as a number two center and have that big number one center up there. But you know what? He still played bigger than he was. Um, 93, 94, 76 games, 25 goals, 43 assists, 68 points. And of course, that's the year the Canucks go to the final. And I had, I had loved Cliffy before that. And just the, the guy was just amazing. Um, 94, 95, this is lockout shortened season, 41 games, six goals, 19 assists, 25 points. And he, that was a down year. Admittedly, he had a down year. And it seemed like things just kind of soured in Vancouver at that point. 95-96, he plays 79 games, 22 goals, 45 assists, 67 points. He wanted to stay in Vancouver. And I remember Brian Burke saying that Cliff Ronning wanted a million dollars a year and that they did not think Cliff Ronning was a million dollar a year player. Something to that, that effect. I heard that on the radio and I remember my jaw dropped and I'm like, are you serious? And I was just really cranky at that point because I felt that Cliff Ronning after what he had done in these seasons in Vancouver deserved a million dollars and this was around the same time that Cortnell they just let Cortnell go uh Adams they traded off and just it was so silly what they did at that point they they took the core that was good and they threw it out rather than taking that good core and fixing what was wrong on the outside the core was fine. They just didn't have the depth up front or on the blue line. So the trick was they traded out the core and brought back guys who... Or they just let the core's contracts expire like Ronning and Cortnell. It was fun. So when people talk about the Canucks not taking care of their assets, what else is new? He signs in Phoenix. He signs in Phoenix on July 1st, 1996. That says 86. That should be 96. Change that to a 9. Um... 
and he signed for the amount of money he wanted. And I was so proud of him for getting the money he wanted from Phoenix. There was no hesitation from them. He goes to Phoenix and hits the ground running. Uh, 96, 97, he plays 69 games, 19 goals, 32 assists, 51 points. Not bad for a million bucks. 97, 98, 80 games played, 11 goals, 44 assists, 55 points. Goal scoring was an issue for him in Phoenix as opposed to what it was in Vancouver. The fit didn't seem to be quite as good, and yet, 98-99, first seven games, he has two goals and five assists, and they trade him. They trade him to the expansion Nashville Predators. Uh, They traded him with Richard Lintner for future considerations. So he just handed him off and his contract. And in Nashville, he could have complained. This is when Cliff Ronning could have said, oh, I'm, I'm with an expansion team. You know, three, four years ago, I'm in Vancouver. We're in the Stanley Cup final, and now I'm on an expansion team. This team's not going anywhere. No. Play 72 games, 18 goals, 35 assists, 53 points in 98-99 with them. So that's a combined 60 points again. 99-2000, 26 goals, 36 assists, 62 points in 82 games. It's not bad for a guy that keeps getting dumped off and and teams seem to think is too small. Um, 2000-2001, 80 games played, 19 goals, 43 assists, 62 points. And I want to mention, he is my favorite player at this point in his career. I think Cliff Ronning's awesome, and I I don't understand why uh, more people don't talk about how how well he's playing and how much... um, how much he's playing despite the fact that he's a smaller player. So he's not getting as worn down as fast as some of the other smaller players who played in the league. 2001-2002. 67 games played, 18 goals, 31 assists, 49 points. At the deadline, he is sent to L.A. L.A. needs some some strength down the middle. They're on a playoff run. Nashville is not. Here you go. So he's traded to L.A. for Yuri Carolotti and a fourth-round draft pick. LA's a disaster. 14 games, one goal, four assists, five points. And uh, there were a lot of comments about how Ronning was done. Playoffs, he played four games. He had one assist. It was a bad fit. Uh, Ronning just didn't fit in LA. So Ronning ends up with Minnesota. He gets traded to Minnesota by LA in the offseason for a fourth round pick. All he does in Minnesota is play 80 games, score 17 goals, 31 assists, for 48 points. And they reward him by him becoming an unrestricted free agent. And I, again, I, I, maybe, maybe I was blinded by this, but I, I couldn't understand why teams didn't want him. So 2003, 2004, he's a restrict, he's an unrestricted free agent halfway through the year. January 9th, 2004, he signs with the Islanders, plays 40 games, nine goals, 15 assists, 24 points, just a 50 point pace. No big deal. And then the lockout happens and the entire season is gone. So he ends up retiring in 2006 rather than coming out and playing or he just decides he's done. He didn't play during the lockout in Europe either. Um, He's the all-time leading Canadian scorer in international play. 97 games played, 72 goals, 79 assists, 151 points. Played for the Canadian national team a lot. Uh, wore the red and white quite a bit and wore it with pride. And I respect that. Um, he says Burry's the best goal scoring teammate he ever played with, and McGillney was the most skilled. So that's that's an interesting uh, little tidbit from him. And uh, he's currently, and, and I double checked on websites, he is the assistant coach for Kunland Red Star in the KHL. So there's a KHL connection there. He is a hockey guy. As much as anybody. Um, I remember during the 2011 Stanley Cup final run that CBC had Cliff running on there after every game to talk about it. And he was genuinely excited. And now he's excited for his son. Ty Ronning, who is graduating from the Vancouver Giants and moving into the New York Rangers organization. He is very excited for his son. And his son was drafted in the seventh round. Why? Because he's small. He's got the talent. He's got the hands. I've seen it firsthand. Now, whether or not he makes it to the NHL level, who knows? Seventh rounder, it's it's a it's a, a stretch. It was a stretch for him too, and he made it. He proved a lot of scouts wrong, and over his career, he never complained. 
At no point in all of this movement that he went through did I hear him complain. There was no whining from him. He was just, he's a team guy, good guy, and I've never heard a bad word said about him. And in Vancouver, if if as a as a hockey player you have any bad behaviors or any bad habits or you've made anybody on your team angry, it'll come out and fans know about it. And I've never heard a bad thing said about Cliff Ronnie. Stand-up guy and uh, had a really, really solid career. 1,137 games played in his career. 306 goals, so he passed 300 when he joined the Islanders. 563 assists, 869 points. That's nearly 900 points for a guy who was five foot eight. Missed a lot of time because teams didn't uh, have faith that he'd make it. Teams being St. Louis and then other benchings he'd have later in his career. But 869 points is fantastic, and I would like to welcome Cliff Ronning to the Hockey Guy Hall of Fame. It's not the real Hall of Fame. I know he got welcomed to the BC Hall of Fame tonight, and when I saw that, I'm like, you know what, Shannon, you got to do this. You've got to put Cliff Ronning in your Hall of Fame because it's not right he's not there. And I've delayed it until now because, honestly, I didn't want to seem like a total homer in doing it. But seriously, uh, he, he was kind of an inspiration to a short guy like myself. I really feel a kinship to the short guys who are completely denigrated and, and treated like they're not good enough. And even though you can go out and perform just as well as somebody who's half a foot taller than you, guys are going to look and go, yeah, you were really good tonight, but we like the taller guy because he's taller. Not because he's better, but he's taller, and we think that that's a better player. It's really frustrating to be disrespected as a shorter player, and for that reason, welcome to the Hall of Fame, Cliff Ronning. And you also get in because you were a damn fine Canuck for a long time. And honestly, all these other teams, no disrespect to them, he should have been a Canuck his whole career. After he left St. Louis, the rest of his career should have been in Vancouver. There's no reason the Canucks couldn't have afforded him. There's no no way that he would not have been a top four center for the Canucks every single year. Because from 96-97, right up until 03-04, I can pretty much figure out where he would have fit into the lineup. Especially in the late 90s when the Canucks were hot garbage. He would have definitely been an upgrade at number two center. And, and he, he would have bolstered their depth, and I never understood why they let him go. It's one of those bewildering decisions that the team made, one of many. But that's for another video for another time. Cliff Ronning, welcome to the Hockey Guy Hall of Fame. I, I don't have uh, anything in particular to offer to players that are currently in the Hockey Guy Hall of Fame. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess the next time the boys make uh, lemonade at the, for Lemonade Stand, if you want to come by and get a free cup of lemonade, that should be that should be fine. Just let me know. Message me through the channel. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Who doesn't love Cliff Ronning? Put your hands down. Put your hands down. That's disrespectful. Cliff Ronning is a legend to me. Maybe only to me. But hey, thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.